Is it lying outside outside? Focusing on my breathing while I was before the lecture or, or if I was crying after the lecture. Even when I was speaking, it just felt good to look out into the crowd and see y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was my line of sight tonight. Was looking forward to seeing y'all. I looked around, you know what I'm saying? But I always came back to y'all. And I think that's a metaphor for it as well. You know what I'm saying? Because no matter what I got going on, no matter what, how crazy life gets, I always come back to y'all. I appreciate y'all being in my life. I appreciate y'all not treating me any different. No matter how crazy things get, regardless if y'all knew, like Jesse, you know what I'm saying? Or John. Feel, I can honestly say, I know y'all feel for me how I feel for y'all, and that makes me happy. So, we go eat together because we family. I like y'all. Amen. Amen. Love you too, man. So I like to, 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 to think of it as the Carlton will effect. Or um, will is, is, is one side of the pair of, the, of, the, of it. <laughs> and Carlton's the other side of it where will is literally what we think of when we think of black. When he's hip from the hood, he had a struggle, he didn't have a dad in his life. You know what I'm saying? He can dance, he has rhythm, he has all these things. And Carlton is what we don't think of. Carlton's what we think of when we like, why are you acting white? And that's literally how they depict it in the show. But does Carlton being privileged? Does Carlton having education? Does Carlton speaking very proper? Or any of the things that make Carlton who he is make him less black? And it doesn't. But we tend to think differently because that's kind of how we were, how we were brought up with thought. There's this game called um, Black Car Revolt. So we do this thing with black, with black people where it's like, bro, you don't know that song, you're not black. Or you don't listen to the little baby, you're not black. And it's like, that's not fair to those people because we're, we're a product of our environment. Some people didn't grow up how you grew up. A lot of people didn't grow up how you grew up. And I know a lot of people like Carlton who go to predominantly black schools with people like Wills. And they get made fun of for speaking properly. It's like, bro, why are you talking white? Or they just, everything that's them, their identity is attacked. And that's not fair to them because when they start to hate themselves. Like mentally, they start to hate themselves and they start to hate the people that are making fun of them. And they start seeing the black community as the enemy because all we know for a long time before social media is your family and your school. You know because you're not interacting with people overseas like you are now with Twitter. You're just interacting with people at school. So you see 30 black kids at school, they all make fun of the way you dress, the way you talk. And it's like, the only people I know who made fun of me are the black kids and people who didn't make fun of me are the white kids. So they start to get this like, idea in their head that we're the enemy. And then for the black kids, it's like, it's, it's a, for the, not for the black kids, but for the, the Will Smiths of it, they have this sense of, it's not fair that you didn't grow up in the hood. Or they, it, you're an embodied, the, the Carlton's are an embodiment of everything that they feel like they deserve, but they didn't deserve. And so for them, it's like, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like what you represent because to, to me, and, and and to them, it, Carlton's are, are, are closer to white than they are. You know what I'm saying? When you put on your white voice, you know what I'm saying? Hello. You know what I'm saying? That's, <laughs> that's how Carlton's talk, but that's not his, that's how he speaks. 
But for us, when we, for the people who are like Will, that's a character, that's a mask that we have to put on to be accepted into corporate America and America in general. And so for them, it's like, bro, you, you're white. It goes hand in hand. And so they tend to, to dislike Carlton because it's like, you're not, they don't, they don't think you're them, themselves. They think they're closer to white than they are. And, and they're typically more accepted. But where we, where we mess up and where Carlton mess up is that they grow up and hold on to that hatred from like elementary school. And then you see him get on Twitter. I remember it was, it was this guy on Twitter, and he was just going on a rant like. Y'all, today I was told that I talk like a white boy. Me, a black man, talks like a white boy. But what's crazier is a black man told me that. And I was just thinking, every time I've heard that, it's been from a black person. I've never heard a white boy say, hey, bro, you talk like us. Yeah, I ain't never heard that bullshit. So that lets me know that only black people think talking with grammar and diction is white. Like, that shit's mad annoying because my parents saw fit that I talk right. You guys think it's me talking white. But in reality, y'all niggas can't read. Like, <laughs> pick up a dictionary, stupid. But man, it's just like, we got to do better because quite frankly, I don't sound white. Y'all sound dumb. That's not fair because just because you're speaking slang, because you, 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 you talk a certain way doesn't mean you're any less intelligent than the other person. It's just it's literally a way of speaking this English. It's, it's, it's broken English. It's, it's okay. We can speak in different dialects. We can speak with accents. We can do all these things. And that, that, that isn't a, a verification of someone's intelligence. So I believe that Carlton, and just like in the show how they depict it, like, I don't know if you ever watched Fresh Prince. Yeah. All right, so y'all know the episode when Carlton got robbed, and he was like, he was in the hospital bed, like, bro, I'm about to shoot everybody. <laughs> or when they, went to, when they went to Philadelphia, Carlton was more accepted than Will was. Like, the, the, the line of what their identity was on basis, like on a base level, as the seasons went on, you understood that Carlton was more than just this preppy kid that's where he's five. His dad lives in Bel Air, you know what I'm saying? He has layers, and Will is more than what he seemed to be, you know what I'm saying? There's parts where Will get a job before Carlton because Will's charismatic and he knows how to talk to different people. And Carlton is used to just one segregated community, like the community he grew up in compared to Philadelphia, where Will is interacting with so many different people. You see that the lines are, it's not so separated as we think. They, they mesh and they have to mesh. And they, they gain a perspective for each other because they're interacting with each other and they, they're forced to. And so for me, I believe everything in life is about perspective and not just perspective on one side. It's, it's, it's them both being on here and meeting in the middle and understanding them more alike than they thought they were at first. And so I have this video, it's an excerpt from uh, Fresh Friends where Carlton and Will both are like, we're pledging for this fraternity. And the dude from the fraternity like, yeah, Will, you in, you know what I'm saying? But, and then he's like, yeah, I'm gonna tell Carlton. He's like, nah, hey, Carlton, not in it. And he's like, why not? He worked as hard as us. And he's like, he just don't got it. So I'm the video explain that thing. Yo, homie, I'm not supposed to say anything, but you have nothing to worry about. You're in. You heard? Me and Carlton got in? Well, not exactly. I mean, you're cool and all, but Carlton, well, he's not exactly our type. He is our type. What do you mean, not our type? Well, Carlton is not like you and me. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't know what you're saying. Will, Carlton doesn't exactly exemplify what I think a Phi Beta Gamma is. Oh, and, and what is that? Well, it's not Ralph Lauren shirts and wingtip shoes in corporate America. We don't need a brother like him in this fraternity. But man, he is exactly what you need in this fraternity. I mean, Carlton has been a straight A student since preschool. He gives you 150% every time. Look, Will, I realize he's your cousin and you have to defend him, but this discussion is closed. All right. I don't know, man. Come on, just let's go. How dare you not take Will? He's full of potential. That's why we want him. It's you we don't want. Me.
But I did everything. I cooked, I cleaned, I hand washed the toilets. Everything your butler does for you. I'm not accepting no prep school Bella Bread sellout into my fraternity. You, know, you can stop all no, that. No, wait, Will. I got this one. You think I'm a sellout? Why? Because I live in a big house or I dress a certain way? Or maybe it's because I like Barry Manilow? You uh, mean Barry White, y'all? <laughs> Being black isn't what I'm trying to be, it's what I am. I'm running the same race and jumping the same hurdles you are, so why are you tripping me up? You said we need to stick together, but you don't even know what that means. If you ask me, you're the real sellout. Yeah, that's right, boy. And in the words of my illustrious cousin, we will make it like a tree and leave. Hey, look, you don't speak for the rest of us, dog. I'm gonna have you kicked out of here. Make like a tree and leave? I never say that. It's make like a banana and split. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind, all right? <laughs> Laszlo, how could you? Oh, get over it, Mary. I'm leaving you for your brother. <laughs> oh, you, you've got to take this from me tomorrow. <laughs> Damn that, Laszlo. <laughs> Hey, we looking at the newest Phi Beta Gamma? No. Apparently, I'm not enough of a brother to be a brother. What? The pledge leader said he didn't like sellouts. Well, who does? I mean, you wait and wait and wait. When you finally get to the front of the line, everything's gone. <laughs> you know, this... This really irritates me. I have worked very hard to give my family a good life, and suddenly somebody tells me there's a penalty for success? I'm sorry you had to go through this, son. When are we gonna stop doing this to each other? So, I talk about that, um, I'm gonna get, that's like a little, like, Easter egg, because I'm gonna talk about that later on. Kyle was saying, like, all of a sudden, there's a penalty for success. But um, I just want to touch on how, like, the Carltons of the black community tend to think they're more accepted by white Americans because they, they kind of are closer to them. But, like, there's a Kanye West line. I know y'all know it. Even if you're in a Benz, you're still a nigga in a coop. Or even uh, the story of OJ, where Jay-Z says, like, OJ was like, I'm, I'm not black, I'm OJ. <laughs> and it's like the okay is so it, the okay has too much space in it because it's like all right that's what you think all right wait till they show you you know what I'm saying like regardless what you think you are and how how, how close you think you are and how you may feel you're still black and we have to embrace our blackness regardless regardless of you don't think you fit in with what you think blackness is like I said blackness is just your skin. I so there's a certain box we have to fit in as black people, like in the black culture. Um, when you think about it, like I remember growing up, all I saw for black people was basketball players, football players, rappers, and it's like a mix of things. You know what I'm saying? Like drug dealers, or like on the news, you know what I'm saying? It's killings and stuff like that. But those are black people. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't seeing astronauts. I wasn't seeing lawyers. I wasn't seeing neuroscientists. It's so many things. It's so many things in the world that you can be. Like not even just black people. There's so many things in the world in general that a person could be. And we're not exposed to all those different things, you know what I'm saying? With you guys being college kids, I'm sure not all of y'all are going to school to be basketball players. Or, you know what I'm saying? Just what, or, or hairstylists, you know what I'm saying? Just the, the, the box of things that we believe we can be. Because there's a limit on what we can do, what they tell us we can do, or they show us that we can do. You know what I'm saying? If you're growing up and you see black people being basketball players, you're like, bro, be a basketball player. That's, a, that's just how that's gonna work. Why would I be a lawyer? I don't see lawyers. And when you do, it's like, oh yeah, it's one lawyer. 
or is this special lawyer from 1960? It's not someone from now. So we don't think it's possible, like subconsciously. Um, but it's hard to, to do certain things while retaining your blackness. My brother, recently, like my brother's not here, but he was telling me about Darius Rucker. Do any of you guys know this? Yes. Yes. Go crazy, right? <laughs> You see how many, do you see how many Grammys he has? But he makes country music. And you know what the black community don't like? Country music. <laughs> and you know what he got? He has, he has white children. He has, he has a white wife. Well, he has a mixed children. He has a white wife. And I'm sure, I'm not sure where his community came from because he could have been accepted in this community because he was surrounded by more white people or the Carlton, the Sports Club. But I'm sure he just gets a lot of shit for this, you know what I'm saying? He makes country music. I'm sure when he was like, yeah, I'm gonna country music, he was like, all right, bro, you're buddy. <laughs> but it's like, why is that limited? A white person can do anything they want. A white person can rap, a white person can make blues. They can do anything, there's no, li there's no limit and there's no line that's like, all right, you rapping, so you're not white. Well, him is probably like, all right, you know, country music, but you're not black. I don't know. But he has Grammys, but like, why isn't the celebrated while more of us know him? And I'll admit, I did not know who he was until yesterday. <laughs> and, uh, and so that's the thing, it's, it, I'm a part of it as well. We're all a part of it. We all have to educate ourselves and, and celebrate different layers of black people because it's, it's layers, we're an onion. There's so many different sides of us. Um, so Frank Ocean. I think y'all love Frank Ocean. <laughs> so, do you guys know Frank Ocean's uh, sexual orientation? Yes. What is it? Bisexual. Right, I'm happy none of y'all said gay because he came out as bisexual. And, it's, and like, we blurred the line between gay and bisexual. But I remember when Frank Ocean came out, like not coming out, when he came out with music, he had thinking about you, he had nobody. And he had she, but you know, black people knew no became they knew thinking about you. And it was just like his music is great. His music is it speak it's generational. You know what I'm saying? It's not like a little baby where it's like, I don't know, you're a young kids tripping. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't understand what he's saying. Everyone loved Frank Ocean, everybody loved thinking about you. And then he was like, Yeah, I'm bisexual. And I just remember it like a flip. I remember old black men like, you know he talking about a nigga, right? <laughs> 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 You know when you're singing that song, you're singing about a nigga, and it's like, why does that matter at all? And, and we're, so, we're so homophobic as black people in the black community, and we're not accepting, we're not accepting of people being different or understanding that people are gonna be different. Why does, why does someone have to fit into the mold of what you think they are, what you think they should be to be black? Or what you think, like, once they're not that, they're passed off. A lot of people, it's like, you're not Christian? No, uh, no. You know what I'm saying, you're Buddhist? You're buddy. Oh, you're into astrology, that's witchcraft. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. Like, there's so many like things that affect our psyche as black people before we're even allowed to enter the world. And if you're not if, you, if we're not accepted in our community, we don't feel like we're accepted in the world at all. And so like, how can I live in my truth? How can how, Franco should be should be allowed to live in his truth? And I was talking to my um, consultant John Connors over here the other day about Frank Ocean. And he's like, the, the, my favorite thing is that when Frank Ocean came out and people cast him off, Jay-Z and Beyonce was like, all right, y'all fuck with him, bet, we're gonna put him on Watch the Throne, we're gonna put him on Magna Carta, we're gonna show y'all how great he is. Because, or sexual orientation or not, he's amazing. Like, Frank Ocean is phenomenal. He's gonna be a legend regardless. And we should celebrate it, but it's unfair, I believe it's unfair to him that he can't live in his truth and be accepted by the community that he belongs to. Not just the gay community, but the black community. And I don't know if it bothers him, but it bothers me. And representation matters, you know? Yeah. Black gay boys should be able to grow up and be like, yo, Empire has a black gay man on it, and he's singing, he's going crazy. Or Frank Ocean's a black gay man. Or, you know, like, and being able to see themselves in, in, in people outside their skin tone. Like, yeah, we have a black superhero. But it's, it's more to a person than being black. And they should be able to see themselves and they deserve that. Just how we deserve to see black women in leads. You know what I'm saying? Like different
types of black people, they deserve that as well. And I remember when Empire first came out, there was a lot of black people, like, you know, the, 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 the homophobic people, like, that's propaganda. They want to show you black dudes being gay because they're trying to make y'all gay. So then we not going to have babies. <laughs> I'm like, no, niggas be gay. Like, that's, that's, <laughs> that's literally all it is, is, is black people are being gay. And like, um, then we try to use the statistic of like how there's reported to be more black gay men in the rising years. And it's like, no, it's just more black people that feel comfortable to be, like, I'm gay and I'm here. Because they see it, they see it on TV. They feel safe. Just the same way where it's like, People aren't just becoming more and more depressed. Yeah, we are, but there's also people that are speaking up about it and being, getting the help that they need because I talk about it. Or it's everywhere you go, like you feel like, all right, I'm not tripping. Maybe I should get your stuff in. And so representation matters because it allows you to feel comfortable in your own space. And this is just an example of like how far we go in the black community. A, a black man killed his son for being gay. He's like, I'd rather have a dead son than well, he didn't say that, let me not misquote him, but the mother felt like he felt he'd rather have a dead son than a gay son. That's not fair. What? And I, I don't understand homophobia. It bothers me. Homophobia gets me so mad. Because what does that have to do with you? You go home and you mind your business. <laughs> so we have generational curses. Think about like just where we've come as black people. I'm pretty sure like if you have a great grandmother in your life, they experience the civil rights movement. Or even your grandmother, they experience racism. I have my grandmother here, she's from the South. Raise your hand, girl. And so we have all of these things that this isn't too long ago. This isn't like six generations ago, this is probably like two, three. You know what I'm saying? We were just protesting, protesting to be seen as equal. We were just protesting to be accepted as human, nonetheless. So we're, we're set behind, and so many things were affecting, was affecting us to where like, your mental didn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, you, you try to make it home. You try not to get lynched. Give a fuck how you feel. I care about your safety and the physical. I care about you being here. And so uh, for a long, we, don't have, we didn't have the luxury to care about those things. And so it, it, it drags on generational crisis. Um, I've been having a bad day, bad week, realistically, because me and my dad haven't been seeing eye to eye. And my dad's a parent were like, bro, I'm gonna move over your head, what you doing? Like, I don't, like he's not understanding it. I understand that he doesn't understand it because he was raised by my grandma. And my grandma raised him to be like, just take care of your family, take care of you, good. Because that's what matters, your safety. And they didn't have the luxury to like, teach each other, like, emotions matter. If, if, if your mental not good, then you can't be good in, in, in the world. And so we've been clashing heads because like, I'm breaking the generational curse of like, no, I, there's something wrong, like, I don't like this, or I want to communicate my feelings, instead of holding them up inside. Because those bad emotions are literally toxic. You know, something's toxic, why would we keep it? in us, that's gonna literally destroy us from the inside out. And so I'm trying to bring the generation of curse, but that's the conflict I've been having of him not knowing how to communicate his feelings. And I, I, I believe it's genuinely him not knowing. He, he wasn't taught how to do it. With me, i taking the steps, trying to stop it. This is how I feel, this is what I should keep for it, and this is, you know what I'm saying, understanding it. And with the generation of curse, it's just hard because it's so embedded into our DNA. But so we have to undo it. We have to first acknowledge it, acknowledge it. What you reveal is what you heal. And so once you acknowledge it, it's like, all right, man, it's not open. Let's figure out, let's organize, let's get it together. And we have to hold each other accountable. You know what I'm saying? Like, if my friend is not communicating his feelings, if he's holding things in, I have to tell him, like, wait, bro, like, this is how you work through it. Or if I'm doing it, someone has to tell me so I can become a better person. And then we have to raise our children better. We're gonna be great parents. The generation's gonna be amazing. Because, <laughs> like, I feel like all of us have dealt with parents where it's like, bro, you're not going through anything. 
you're lying. <laughs> so with us going through that, it's like, I just, I just know for me, I was like, I'm gonna raise my kids to know how to communicate their feelings. You know what I'm saying? You just think like, all right, man, this is, I'm going through this right now, but when I get an adult, my kid never gonna have to feel how I feel right now. And so, I have a story about my brother. My brother, Deontay, has two children. And he has like a little son. His son's a firecracker, he's just like his dad. But they were at the movies or something, and he has children from two different women. And so he was out with both of them, like both of the, the, the children. And the, my niece's mom called, like, yeah, I want her home. And he like, but we all seeing, what's that movie? That movie with the skeletons. Coco! Coco, yeah? Hey, so up, so up, so up, so up. I got an hour to talk, I've been talking for like 20 for I got it. But Coco, he's all seeing Coco. And she's like, I need him home. So then my, you know what I'm saying, he don't want to take him to the movie. So he ended, he ended up having to take him to the movie. And then my nephew, mom, picked him up. He's like, yeah, she made us leave the movie early. I was pissed. <laughs> and like, he's like 6'5", so it's like, <laughs> you was what, bro? What are you <laughs> he was pissed. How do you even know what that means? <laughs> and so, it's weird because we were raised in, in a household where it's like, bro, your cuss is, is clipped. It's over. Because you wash your eye. Mom, then I had to wash my tongue out with soap? Bro, yes. what does that do for me? <laughs> oh my god, I remember doing it on Burr Road. Oh my god. Yes. But we're raised in a family where yes. you cuss and, and it's over. You wash your tongue out, you get a whooping. With him, he literally said, and he told me, he was like, yeah. I, I was taking it back at first, but I'm like, all right, let me talk to him. Like, DJ, this is not how you communicate how you feel. You don't say you're pissed off because that's a word you're not supposed to say. You can articulate how you feel in a different way. I'm like, I was proud. <laughs> I, was, I was proud of the day he's become and, and, and I believe my nephew's communication skills will be better than him. Okay. You guys can read this as I'm, as I'm speaking. But, um, the, 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 the desensitization of black lives being murdered. Um, do you guys remember where you were when you you laughed because I you did not say it now, nah, I was making fun of you for not knowing how to say it, now nah, I'm not saying it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but do you guys remember where you were when Trayvon Martin was murdered? I don't know, neither one of y'all say I'm gonna keep moving now. Um, but I remember when he was murdered, I was in eighth grade. And for me that was like that was like everything I learned about black history being like, no, nah, we still here. Like, no, it's not, this is not a thing of the past, like, we still killing y'all. And getting off on it. And I remember, like, when they, the verdict came out for the fact that he, George Zimmerman, George Zimmerman wasn't guilty. I was in Chicago. Like, I remember the whole thing. I remember all this. Because for me as a black boy, I'm like, <clears throat> it's looking steep for me. You feel me? Like, oh, they can do this and get off? Like, regardless of him saying, yeah, he attacked me. You saw so you shot him. And after the cop said, no, it's okay, don't follow him, don't pursue. And you did, and you got off. That was just, to me, like, it was unsettling. And now I remember when Mike Brown passed away. Mike Brown was murdered, I should say, not passed away, because his life was taken from him. Um, that's when the Ferguson riots started. And I just remember, like, the Black Lives Matter movement. I just remember it was a really dark summer. I just remember it was, like, a really uneasy feeling of, of where we stood in America, you know what I'm saying? That's when, like, the martial law thing was happening, and it was just like, Yo, we're about to be okay. And nobody knew, it was really unsettling. But they show us the black lives being taken from us. Like they show Tamir Rice being shot, you know what I'm saying? Like, they show Eric Garner, they show all these people, they show it. And I remember at one time, like, I can admit to it. I see the deaths on the TL, and I'm like, yo, this is a lot. Like, it's not what I would get on Twitter for. I don't want to see black people die, so I, look, I just look away. And if I'm looking away, I can't see what's happening right here. So it, it, it desensitizes you from it to where you don't even care anymore. And you may think like, yeah, I do care, but if you're not looking and you're not paying attention, then you don't. But it also shows us like, y'all think Black Lives Matter? All right, bro, we're gonna show y'all y'all don't. We're gonna show y'all how we really feel about y'all. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna show y'all that y'all are still what we believe y'all to be less of a person. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna break y'all down. We're gonna show y'all that, that you can't exist in yourself, you can't feel safe in in, in in environment, you know what I'm saying? You can't play music too loud. Or you can't walk in a neighborhood that don't look like you're supposed to be in there. 
You know what I'm saying? Because your life can be taken from you. And so it creates like this, this uneasy feeling of when you're in public. And you may not even think about it, but when something happens, all right, me and Angelo, we was, we was out. We was out the other day, and some deers ran in front of them. Some deers ran in front of the car. So we got the car, you don't think it's just instinct. It's just, it's one of those deers are probably Brother Nature. And, <laughs> and after, like, we just hear a cop. And it's like, you're working the car. And I'm like, and in the video, I say it's a cop, it's a cop, it's a cop. And like, you can hear my fear. Canela! 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 Canella! Low! Canella! Oh, it's the cops. 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 I text friends, I send my location because it's like anything can happen. Not and, and, and you when you're doing all that <laughs> When you're doing all that, you sometimes feel like I'm overreacting, but you're not. There's this feeling because it's like it can happen to any of us. It's, it's happened before, it's happened before, it's happened over and over and over and over again. And so, ah, white people, like when, you, when you're with your white friends, or just pay attention to how white people interact in general, like how they are in public spaces. They're a lot less aware than, than we naturally are. Because they, they don't notice, or they're not, they don't have to be aware of the space that they take up, so they never really notice that they're in your way. And I mean that in... <laughs> So I said, they, they're never made aware of the space that they take up, so they never realize they're in your way. And I mean that in a literal and metaphorical sense. You know what I'm saying? They don't realize that they get jobs easier than we do, so they don't realize they're taking jobs from people that may be more qualified than they are. Or they may not realize literally like that they're in your way. Like a lot of times, you gonna be like right here to them before you guys say, excuse me. A lot of times, no one has to be <laughs> I know I'm preaching, but y'all gotta keep it to a minimum. Unless I really say something, do I say something? Y'all gonna know, y'all gonna know. <laughs> but literally, you know what I'm saying? For me, a lot of times, like I was in Target the other day, and there was like two people that walked, two different people that walked in front of me and behind me. And I just boom, boom, without even having to look, because I know you're there, I'm aware of it, I know the exits, I know everything, because like anything can happen. And if I'm not aware of the space I take up, it can cost me my life. What are the consequences for white people taking up too much space? What are the consequences for them not being aware? There isn't. So it's like, fuck, it's not in your way. Like, what you gonna do to me? You know what I'm saying? That's why, like, you see, a lot of times you see white kids running rampant, playing with toys, dropping stuff. Black kids, it's like, hey, bro, your mama either gonna whoop you or somebody else will do it to you. Your mama, your mama gonna make sure you're good first because she don't want them to take you away from her. And then white people don't have to go do that. They don't have that pressure that we have. So I have this video of uh, Charles Gambino. Chris Rock said this too, and it's really smart. It's like, what black people need more than anything is a chance to fail. Like, Jaden has a chance to fail and learn. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really what it is. Like, white kids get to fail all the time and be like, oh, that didn't work. I'm going to try again. Mm -hmm. I've never had a chance to fail. That's why I'm exceptional. That's why we are exceptional. Well, we failed. I failed. I, I failed in life. I've you, gone. I've been to jail. Yeah, failed, look at you. Failed classes. You're amazing. Yeah, look what you're doing. I, you got fired. Uh, yes, I've been times. fired four times mm -hmm. from radio. I've gotten plenty of chances to fail. That's why I succeed. Right. You you learn from your failures. Absolutely. Right. Everyone does. But how many chances do you really get? Like I've gotten a lot, my brother. Now I <laughs> really? will tell the, I tell these kids a lot nowadays that they're not giving you the chance to fail because these cops will kill you in the street. They'll right. put you away for hundreds of years for the little. So they're not giving you a chance to fail. I do agree with that. Right. To a certain extent. But at life, we're not in general, like, allowed to, like, fail. I just want to be, like, free. I just want to be as honest and free. Because, like, I reveal right now, it's like that. Yeah, so I feel that way. It's going to play again. I'm going to keep this slide up because it's the next slide. I'm moving too fast. My fault. Um, but as he was saying, like, we don't have the chance to fail. Like, we don't. There's just a certain pressure on black people. There's a certain pressure on people in general. But black people especially. Because for a lot of us... We're the first people in our family to do something. Or our generation is the first, you know what I'm saying? Because your mama was working for you. And they mama and parents were working for them. So it's like, you better make something of yourself because we sacrificed for you, you know what I'm saying? And like, we don't have that, for a long time we were slaves. 
And if we wasn't slaves, we'd fight for our rights. And so like, we're not as established as, as white people, our counterparts are, because for forever they've just been here, and being able to be existing. <coughs> And profiting without, you know what I'm saying? They were, they were profiting off of black bodies. You know what I'm saying? They were able to just establish themselves. We're still trying to establish ourselves, and we're not. And so there's a certain pressure on us to succeed and be excellent, and nothing below that. And so I think of my mom, I was talking to my brother about it, like I was going back and forth with my brother, the same one I brought up before. And he was like, think about our mom, like, she couldn't feel, she single mom with three kids, working job, and trying to get her degree. If you think about that, in which one of those areas could she have failed in? If she fell as a mom, she loses her children. Or if she fails as a mom, her kids end up hating her she raised horrible kids. You know what I'm saying? Or if she fails at her job, she loses her job. Now she can't raise her kids. Or if she fails at college, she can't get another job. And now she can't raise her kids how she needs to raise them. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing that she can fill as so it's a pressure of just like, and it's not even pressure she put on herself. This is just the pressure of the necessary things she has to do. You know what I'm saying? But there's no fallback. She can't go back to her mom's house. She can't. She can't go back to her dad's house. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no fallback. It's either you get this done or it's done. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's an unnecessary pressure. But we don't have that. We don't have that establishment. We don't have that support. And not because we don't have it, but we literally, not because it's not. It's because it's not there. We're not established enough in America to be able to have, like, grandparents who have a ranch. And we can just go to their ranch and get this shit don't work out. Like how you said about Jaden. Jaden's father is Will Smith, so it's like Jaden can try acting, he can try rapping, he can try all these things and like, figure out what it is he wants to do. With y'all and with us, it's like, my nigga, you pick that and it's done. <laughs> and if you don't want to be that no more, all right, well, your kid gonna have the next option. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not how that is for them. I think about me, because uh, my, mine is a little bit more complex because I, I, I'm a freelance, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I do, I'm an entrepreneur, I do the social media stuff, I do everything, I do speaking, and say if I mess up this speaking again, and it's like, damn, we brought this nigga in here, and he don't know how to talk, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't get the same opportunities that my, my white counterparts made to be, to fail and try again, but also like, I'm, I'm the first for me, you know what I'm saying, like, I want to be the first, I want to be a millionaire, I want to be a billionaire, I want to establish that luxury of failing for my children. I want to retire my mom, I, I don't want it to be working, 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 working until you die for my family. So there's a pressure I put on myself, but there's a pressure that's automatically there, because it's like, I'm in this position, I got to do something with it. There's pressure on y'all as college students, because y'all parents work nine to fives, a lot of y'all parents work nine to fives to get y'all here, you know what I'm saying? When you fell a class, you're like, God, damn it. <laughs> like, not even just the regular pressure of failing the class, but the pressure of letting your family down, letting your parents work not, for you don't even want to call your parents and tell them like, I failed this class, you know what I'm saying? Because they, they're, they're literally working for you. So you feel like you're wasting your money, you feel like you're wasting your time, you feel like you're letting them down. It's just, it's a pressure now. Pressure sometimes to either make diamonds or make you bust. And you gotta decide what it's gonna do, but it, it's it. I can't act like it don't affect our mental. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you don't sleep at night because you're like, bro, I got this paper to do. It. If I don't do this paper, it's done. Mm -hmm. College students already have that pressure, but as just in general, with us not having a setup to where it's like we can fail, then you're gonna put more pressure on yourself. This is my grandma. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I tripped, I tripped, I tripped. Um, <laughs> So, first, help isn't accessible. Like, we gotta get help. But help isn't accessible. Like, if you think about the black community, you think about just in general, <coughs> we first don't acknowledge that there's a problem. That's the hardest part, is acknowledging, like, something's wrong with me. And then the second part is finding a therapist, or finding a counselor, or finding someone to talk to me. And then when you do that, it's like, it's usually a, like my therapist, when I went to therapy before, it was an old white woman. She don't know what I'm going through as a black man, which is a, 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 a not all I am, but a big part of my identity. So I have to explain to her, like, oh yeah, maybe someone may not want me near their car, they can lock the doors, you know what I'm saying? She may think she get it, but she not, I'm never gonna feel like she get it because she ain't lived my experience. And so there's a certain, like, just disconnect of that. 
And so that's where representation comes in, where that's needing more black therapists. Because if you go to a black, if I go to a black lady therapist, I'm like, that's my mom. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is someone I can identify with. This is someone that has probably raised black boys, and she know what a black boy go through. Every black woman I see, I see my mom in the They treat you like a mother. It's like, oh, hey, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, there's a certain sense of just, like, love that they have for you. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to guess it. You just feel it automatically because they, I'm sure they see their, their, their children in you. You know what I'm saying? Where there's a, there's a sense of community with that. And so, that's a part of him. We have to heal from the generational crisis, from the things that we like go through in our mind, whether it's depression or the stress or the pressure. We have to heal from it. And so, we heal through first acknowledging, like I said, and then second, constantly validating our feelings. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of times in my mind, like, I have a problem with, I'm wealthy, I guess. <laughs> but I be like, all right, you got money, but you shouldn't be sad. And I tell myself that, and I know that's not the truth, but like, that's what people tell me, and then I value my feelings, and it's like, bro, you're not supposed to be sad, and you got everything everybody wants, you're not supposed to be sad. And so I just go through it in my mind and validate my feelings, and that doesn't fix anything. But I know a lot of us do that, you know what I'm saying? A lot of us invalidate our feelings. So the biggest part is, Telling yourself like it's okay to feel like this, regardless if you think it's stupid, if you think it's goofy, if you think it's a little thing, you know what I'm saying? If your boyfriend forgot to get your food and you trip out on him, you know what I'm saying? You may not even react how you react, but you how you felt matters. And you deserve to <laughs> you deserve to have that validated. They're about to go home and trip. <laughs> you deserve to have that validated. And so I um I interviewed my grandma about healing. Because my grandma was a therapy. I didn't know she was a therapy. Like, at any point, I didn't know. My grandma, when she found out about my videos, she was like, yeah, your videos, like, I watch your videos. When I get sad or I get depressed, I watch your videos. It touched my heart. But then I also, I also interviewed her about, like, her journey of going through the things that she went through. What's your name? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He was so young when I uh, seeked help. Mm -hmm. My seeked help, what do you mean? When I figured out that it was something wrong with the way I was feeling. We would go to therapy a couple of weeks, a couple of times a week. Mm -hmm. Then we see a psychiatrist a couple of times a week. And uh, they would let us talk, talk listen to my story, listen to her story or his story or whatever, just like he is. How did it feel to tell your story and listen to what others were going through? Did it help? Mm-hmm. That you ain't by yourself. Mm -hmm. There's somebody out there just like you. So how? And sometimes their story, sometimes if I had, if you had all the things on the table, I grab my head's back because bad but it's bad as somebody else's. <laughs> <laughs> so did my dad know you were going to therapy? Yes. He knew when at the time? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did he feel about it? We didn't really talk about it. He was working all the time and I was working. And uh he would come to see me and we never got into it, but as long as I was getting the help. Yeah, I guess he could see the change in me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like I'm tearing up now and all that because I'm happy now that I got the help. So many people don't even know how to go get it. I just went and got it because I knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, they just want to zunk out or kill themselves because it's, and life is up and down. And it's still a fight, mm -hmm. you know? So it's just like, uh, A lot of times I, I'll hear uh, comedian. Mm -hmm. And once I laugh and, and and catch on to their jokes and all, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's something that you have to deal with. All, I think it's, it's something I'm going to have to deal with all my life. Even the medication got me to a point, but even with the medication, you're not going to ever... Uh, eliminate the problem of depression because this is 
this is the uh, this is the form of the brain that's like an illness, just like your heart. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that got me through it, because when you have a, a brain that people have not studied over the years, when we, as, as old as I am, 75, mm -hmm. doctors didn't have the opportunity to go into the brains and find out what's wrong with the brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, years ago, it was like they didn't have the medication, they stuck you in an institution, took you away from people, and they didn't know how to treat it. Mm -hmm. But the brain gets sick, just like the heart. And that's what people have to realize. And that's what the modern people have come, uh, that's what's that's come since my time. Mm -hmm. And that's what they explain, how they explain it to me. Depression is just a form of a part of the brain, just like Alzheimer's, strokes, um, anything that happens to the brain. Mm -hmm. So don't think that just because you are depressed that you are not capable of learning, because I've learned a lot over my years. And, and people have a stigma against it because they want to think that you're crazy. And that's one of the things I learned when my treatment was, you don't use the word crazy. No such thing. Was this hard? No, not really. Did you notice the camera? I didn't look into the camera. I was looking at you all the time. So you felt comfortable? So I felt comfortable. I know people I learned something from. And I enjoy it. If you don't know yourself, how are you going to make yourself better? So you got to figure out what makes you happy, what makes you sad, what triggers you. What triggers you is so important. Like for me, I don't like, I'm real picky with food. And I don't like, um, I, I hate when people be like, oh, you don't like this? That's crazy. Like I don't like ranch. And they're like, how you don't like ranch? Well, there's opinions and opinions are different. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. Like that bothers me. It really bothers me. I know it's different. Ignore it. All right, whatever. But, you also have to accept that it's not gonna happen overnight. You know what I'm saying? It takes years, it takes time. Like I've been figuring out myself and learning about myself and just trying to figure out how to handle the things I deal with for years. And I'm st I still am still struggling with it sometimes. Sometimes I feel like I am praying sometimes. Maybe I don't, but I'm still trying. I'm still fighting. And as long as you're able to fight, then that's all that matters, you know what I'm saying? You either live or you die. And, and I wanna live. I want to live so bad, and I, I, I hope y'all do. So, I mean, as I spoke about it, as you can see from the many of the things I've, I've spoke about, um, we as black people just deal with so many things first, like before any depression, like anything that, that's singular to our lives, like, you know what I'm saying, things that you may deal with or you may deal with. We just deal with certain things as a whole. This is being, but for being black, there's certain pressure, there's a certain sense of unsafety in our, our community. You know what I'm saying? There's just a lot of things. But then you add on top of the other things that may go on in your house or your house, you know what I'm saying? And that adds on to it. So there's so many things that we have to unlearn and we have to unpack. You know what I'm saying? Like, like think you're unpacking a duffel bag and there's another duffel bag in it. It's like, damn, I got more baggage. Like, there's more things I gotta learn about myself. There's more things that's wrong with me and it, sometimes it feels like exhausting, sometimes it feels pointless. But at some point you're going to open up a bag and there's nothing in it. And you're going to know everything that was in the other bags. Um, we as black people have this feeling of feeling like we got to be strong all the time. Like to be black is to be strong. But I think our definition of what strong is is skewed. And to break down doesn't mean you're weak. You know what I'm Y'all know my quote. <laughs> I feel weak, but I know I'm strong. Nah, yeah, I feel weak, but I know I'm strong. <laughs> <laughs> Mess it up. No, I'm just saying, but no, 
You know what I'm saying? It's about like that whole thing is about acknowledging that. You feel weak? You know what I'm saying? Acknowledging it. Living in that. Cried one time. I cried on the way here. I cried last night. I've been crying. <laughs> but I'm here. I'm standing up strong. You know what I'm saying? And like, that's what being strong is. Resilience. It's going forward and just getting knocked down and getting back up and putting your best foot forward. And so, just because the scars aren't seen doesn't mean they aren't real. Thank you. Hey, class again, that was good.